In mathematics, a differentiable manifold, also differential manifold is a type of manifold that is locally similar enough to a linear space to allow one to do calculus. Any manifold can be described by a collection of charts, also known as an atlas. One may then apply ideas from calculus while working within the individual charts, since each chart lies within a linear space to which the usual rules of calculus apply. If the charts are suitably compatible namely, the transition from one chart to another is differentiable, then computations done in one chart are valid in any other differentiable chart. In formal terms, a differentiable manifold is a topological manifold with a globally defined differential structure. Any topological manifold can be given a differential structure locally by using the homeomorphisms in its atlas and the standard differential structure on a linear space. To induce a global differential structure on the local coordinate systems induced by the homeomorphisms, their composition on chart intersections in the atlas must be differentiable functions on the corresponding linear space. In other words, where the domains of charts overlap, the coordinates defined by each chart are required to be differentiable with respect to the coordinates defined by every chart in the atlas. The maps that relate the coordinates defined by the various charts to one another are called transition maps. Differentiability means different things in different contexts including, continuously differentiable, k times differentiable, smooth, and holomorphic. Furthermore, the ability to induce such a differential structure on an abstract space allows one to extend the definition of differentiability to spaces without global coordinate systems. A differential structure allows one to define the globally differentiable tangent space, differentiable functions, and differentiable tensor and vector fields. Differentiable manifolds are very important in physics. Special kinds of differentiable manifolds form the basis for physical theories such as classical mechanics, general relativity, and Yang-Mills theory. It is possible to develop a calculus for differentiable manifolds. This leads to such mathematical machinery as the exterior calculus. The study of calculus on differentiable manifolds is known as differential geometry. History The emergence of differential geometry as a distinct discipline is generally credited to Carl Friedrich Gauss and Bernard Riemann. Riemann first described manifolds in his famous habilitation lecture before the faculty at Göttingen. He motivated the idea of a manifold by an intuitive process of varying a given object in a new direction, and presciently described the role of coordinate systems and charts in subsequent formal developments. Having constructed the notion of a manifoldness of n dimensions, and found that its true character consists in the property that the determination of position in it may be reduced to n determinations of magnitude. B. Remanthe works of physicists such as James Clerk Maxwell, and mathematicians Gregorio Ricci Curbastro and Tullio Levi Civita led to the development of tensor analysis and the notion of covariance, which identifies an intrinsic geometric property as one that is invariant with respect to coordinate transformations. These ideas found a key application in Einstein's theory of general relativity and its underlying equivalence principle. A modern definition of a two-dimensional manifold was given by Hermann Weyl in his 1913 book on Riemann surfaces. The widely accepted general definition of a manifold in terms of an atlas is due to Hassler Whitney. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definition A presentation of a topological manifold is a second countable Hausdorff space that is locally homeomorphic to a vector space by a collection called an atlas of homeomorphisms called charts. The composition of one chart with the inverse of another chart is a function called a transition map and defines a homeomorphism of an open subset of the linear space onto another open subset of the linear space. This formalizes the notion of patching together pieces of a space to make a manifold. 
The manifold produced also contains the data of how it has been patched together. However, different atlases patchings may produce the same manifold. A manifold does not come with a preferred atlas. Thus, one defines a topological manifold to be a space as above with an equivalence class of atlases, where one defines equivalence of atlases below. There are a number of different types of differentiable manifolds, depending on the precise differentiability requirements on the transition functions. Some common examples include the following. A differentiable manifold is a topological manifold equipped with an equivalence class of atlases whose transition maps are all differentiable. More generally, a CK manifold is a topological manifold with an atlas whose transition maps are all k times continuously differentiable. A smooth manifold or C infinity manifold is a differentiable manifold for which all the transition maps are smooth. That is, derivatives of all orders exist, so it is a CK manifold for all K. An equivalence class of such atlases is said to be a smooth structure. An analytic manifold, or C omega manifold, is a smooth manifold with the additional condition that each transition map is analytic, the Taylor expansion is absolutely convergent and equals the function on some open ball. A complex manifold is a topological space modeled on a Euclidean space over the complex field and for which all the transition maps are holomorphic. While there is a meaningful notion of a CK atlas, there is no distinct notion of a CK manifold other than CO continuous maps, a topological manifold and C infinity smooth maps, a smooth manifold because for every CK structure with K greater than 0, there is a unique CK equivalent C infinity structure every C CK structure is uniquely smoothable to a C infinity structure a result of Whitney. In fact, every CK structure is uniquely smoothable to a C omega structure. Furthermore, two CK atlases that are equivalent to a single C infinity atlas are equivalent as CK atlases, so two distinct CK atlases do not collide. C differential structure section existence and uniqueness theorems for details. Thus, one uses the terms differentiable manifold and smooth manifold interchangeably. This is in stark contrast to CK maps, where there are meaningful differences for different K. For example, the Nash embedding theorem states that any manifold can be CK isometrically embedded in Euclidean space Rn. For any one K infinity, there is a sufficiently large N, but N depends on K. On the other hand, complex manifolds are significantly more restrictive. As an example, Chow's theorem states that any projective complex manifold is in fact a projective variety, it has an algebraic structure. <laughs> <laughs> Atlases An atlas on a topological space X is a collection of pairs U alpha, far called charts, where the U alpha are open sets that cover X, and for each index alpha, phi alpha U alpha R N display style var phi underscore alpha colon U underscore alpha to math BF R carrot N is a homeomorphism of U alpha onto an open subset of n-dimensional real space. The transition maps of the atlas are the functions phi alpha beta equals phi beta phi alpha minus one phi alpha u alpha u beta phi alpha u alpha u beta phi beta u alpha u beta 
Display style Varfi underscore alpha beta equals Varfi underscore beta circ Varfi underscore alpha carrot minus one underscore Varfi underscore alpha U underscore alpha cap U underscore beta colon Varfi underscore alpha U underscore alpha cap U underscore beta to Varfi underscore beta U underscore alpha cap U underscore beta Every topological manifold has an atlas. A CK atlas is an atlas whose transition maps are CK. A topological manifold has a CO atlas and in general a CK manifold has a CK atlas. A continuous atlas is a CO atlas, a smooth atlas is a C infinity atlas and an analytic atlas is a C omega atlas. If the atlas is at least C1, it is also called a differential structure or differentiable structure. A holomorphic atlas is an atlas whose underlying Euclidean space is defined on the complex field and whose transition maps are biholomorphic. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Compatible atlases. Different atlases can give rise to, in essence, the same manifold. The circle can be mapped by two coordinate charts, but if the domains of these charts are changed slightly a different atlas for the same manifold is obtained. These different atlases can be combined into a bigger atlas. It can happen that the transition maps of such a combined atlas are not as smooth as those of the constituent atlases. If CK atlases can be combined to form a CK atlas, then they are called compatible. Compatibility of atlases is an equivalence relation. By combining all the atlases in an equivalence class, a maximal atlas can be constructed. Each CK atlas belongs to a unique maximal CK atlas. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alternative definitions. topic pseudogroups the notion of a pseudogroup provides a flexible generalization of atlases in order to allow a variety of different structures to be defined on manifolds in a uniform way a pseudogroup consists of a topological space s and a collection gamma consisting of homeomorphisms from open subsets of s to other open subsets of s such that if f element of gamma and u is an open subset of the domain of f then the restriction f u is also in gamma if f is a homeomorphism from a union of open subsets of s i u i display style cup underscore i u underscore i to an open subset of s then f element of gamma provided f u i element of gamma display style f underscore u underscore i in gamma for every i for every open us the identity transformation of u is in gamma if f element of gamma then f minus 1 element of gamma the composition of two elements of gamma is in gamma these last three conditions are analogous to the definition of a group Note that gamma need not be a group, however, since the functions are not globally defined on S for example, the collection of all local CK diffeomorphisms on Rn form a pseudogroup. All biholomorphisms between open sets in CN form a pseudogroup. More examples include, orientation-preserving maps of Rn, symplectomorphisms, Mobius transformations, affine transformations, and so on. Thus, a wide variety of function classes determine pseudogroups. An atlas Ui, phi I, of homeomorphisms phi I from Ui M to open subsets of a topological space S is said to be compatible with a pseudogroup γ provided that the transition functions phi J phi I minus 1, phi I Ui Uj, phi J Ui Uj are all in γ. A differentiable manifold is then an atlas compatible with the pseudogroup of CK functions on Rn. A complex manifold is an atlas compatible with the biholomorphic functions on open sets in CN. And so forth. 
Thus, pseudogroups provide a single framework in which to describe many structures on manifolds of importance to differential geometry and topology. Structure sheaf Sometimes, it can be useful to use an alternative approach to endow a manifold with a CK structure. Here K Topic one two infinity or omega for real analytic manifolds. Instead of considering coordinate charts, it is possible to start with functions defined on the manifold itself. The structure sheaf of M, denoted C K, is a sort of functor that defines for each open set U M an algebra C K U of continuous functions U R. A structure sheaf C K is said to give M the structure of a C K manifold of dimension n, provided that for any p element of M, there exists a neighborhood U of p and n functions x one. X n element of C k u such that the map f x one x n u r n is a homeomorphism onto an open set in R n, and such that C k u is the pullback of the sheaf of k times continuously differentiable functions on R n. In particular, this latter condition means that any function h in C k v for v can be written uniquely as h x equals h x one x x n x, where h is a k times differentiable function on f v an open set in R n. Thus, the sheaf theoretic viewpoint is that the functions on a differentiable manifold can be expressed in local coordinates as differentiable functions on R n, and a fortiori this is sufficient to characterize the differential structure on the manifold. Equals. Topic: Sheaves of local rings. Equals. A similar, but more technical, approach to defining differentiable manifolds can be formulated using the notion of a ring space. This approach is strongly influenced by the theory of schemes in algebraic geometry, but uses local rings of the germs of differentiable functions. It is especially popular in the context of complex manifolds. We begin by describing the basic structure sheaf on Rn. If U is an open set in R n, let O U equals C K U R consist of all real valued K times continuously differentiable functions on U. As U varies, this determines a sheaf of rings on R n. The stalk op for P element of R n consists of germs of functions near P, and is an algebra over R in particular. This is a local ring whose unique maximal ideal consists of those functions that vanish at P. The pair R n o is an example of a locally ringed space, it is a topological space equipped with a sheaf whose stalks are each local rings. A differentiable manifold of class C K consists of a pair M, OM where M is a second countable Hausdorff space, and OM is a sheaf of local R algebras defined on M, such that the locally ringed space M, OM is locally isomorphic to R N, O. In this way, differentiable manifolds can be thought of as schemes modeled on R N. This means that for each point p element of M, there is a neighborhood U of p, and a pair of functions f, f hash, where f, u f, u r n is a homeomorphism onto an open set in R n. f hash, o, f, u, f, om, u is an isomorphism of sheaves. The localization of f hash is an isomorphism of local ring s f hash f p of p om p. There are a number of important motivations for studying differentiable manifolds within this abstract framework. First, there is no a priori reason that the model space needs to be R n. For example, in particular in algebraic geometry, one could take this to be the space of complex numbers Cn equipped with the sheaf of holomorphic functions thus arriving at the spaces of complex analytic geometry, or the sheaf of polynomials thus arriving at the spaces of interest in complex algebraic geometry. 
In broader terms, this concept can be adapted for any suitable notion of a scheme see Topo's theory. Second, coordinates are no longer explicitly necessary to the construction. The analog of a coordinate system is the pair f, f hash, but these merely quantify the idea of local isomorphism rather than being central to the discussion as in the case of charts and atlases. Third, the sheaf OM is not manifestly a sheaf of functions at all. Rather, it emerges as a sheaf of functions as a consequence of the construction via the quotients of local rings by their maximal ideals. Hence, it is a more primitive definition of the structure see synthetic differential geometry. A final advantage of this approach is that it allows for natural direct descriptions of many of the fundamental objects of study to differential geometry and topology. The cotangent space at a point is IP, IP2, where IP is the maximal ideal of the stalk OM, P. In general, the entire cotangent bundle can be obtained by a related technique see cotangent bundle for details. Taylor series and jets can be approached in a coordinate independent manner using the IPADIC filtration on OM, P. The tangent bundle or more precisely its sheaf of sections can be identified with the sheaf of morphisms of OM into the ring of dual numbers. Topic: Differentiable functions. A real valued function f on an n-dimensional differentiable manifold M is called differentiable at a point p element of M if it is differentiable in any coordinate chart defined around p. In more precise terms, if u phi display style u var phi is a chart where U display style U is an open set in M display style M containing P and phi U R N display style var phi U to math B F R carrot N is the map defining the chart. Then F is differentiable if and only if F Phi minus one phi u r n r display style f circ var phi caret minus one colon var phi u subset math b f r caret n two math b f r is differentiable at phi p display style var phi p that is f is a differentiable function from the open set phi u display style var phi u considered as a subset of r n displays tile math b f r caret n to r display style math b f r in general, there will be many available charts, however, the definition of differentiability does not depend on the choice of chart at P, it follows from the chain rule applied to the transition functions between one chart and another that if F is differentiable in any particular chart at P, then it is differentiable in all charts at P. Analogous considerations apply to defining CK functions, smooth functions, and analytic functions. Topic. Differentiation of functions There are various ways to define the derivative of a function on a differentiable manifold, the most fundamental of which is the directional derivative. The definition of the directional derivative is complicated by the fact that a manifold will lack a suitable affine structure with which to define vectors. Therefore, the directional derivative looks at curves in the manifold instead of vectors. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Directional differentiation. Given a real valued function f on an m-dimensional differentiable manifold m, the directional derivative of f at a point p in m is defined as follows. 
Suppose that gamma t is a curve in M with gamma 0 equals p, which is differentiable in the sense that its composition with any chart is a differentiable curve in room. Then the directional derivative of f at p along gamma is d d t f gamma t t equals zero. Display style left frac d d t f gamma t right underscore t equals zero. If gamma one and gamma two are two curves such that gamma one zero. Topic gamma two zero. P and in any coordinate chart phi d d t phi gamma one t t equals zero equals d d t phi gamma two t T equals zero. Display style left frac d d t var phi circ gamma underscore one t right underscore t equals zero equals left frac d d t var phi circ gamma underscore two t right underscore t equals zero. Then, by the chain rule, f has the same directional derivative at p along gamma one as along gamma two. This means that the directional derivative depends only on the tangent vector of the curve at p, thus, the more abstract definition of directional differentiation adapted to the case of differentiable manifolds ultimately captures the intuitive features of directional differentiation in an affine space. <laughs> tangent vector and the differential A tangent vector at p element of M is an equivalence class of differentiable curves gamma with gamma 0 equals p, modulo the equivalence relation of first order contact between the curves. Therefore, gamma 1 gamma 2 d d t phi gamma 1 t T equals zero equals D D T Phi Gamma two T T equals zero Display style gamma underscore one equivalent gamma underscore two IFF left frac D D T var phi circ gamma underscore one T right underscore T equals zero equals left frac D D T var phi circ gamma underscore two T right underscore T equals zero in every coordinate chart phi. Therefore, the equivalence classes are curves through P with a prescribed velocity vector at P. The collection of all tangent vectors at P forms a vector space, the tangent space to M at P, denoted TPM. If X is a tangent vector at P and F a differentiable function defined near P, then differentiating F along any curve in the equivalence class defining X gives a well-defined directional derivative along X. X F P equals D D T F gamma T T equals zero. Display style x f p equals left frac D D T F gamma T right underscore T equals zero. Once again, the chain rule establishes that this is independent of the freedom in selecting gamma from the equivalence class, since any curve with the same first-order contact will yield the same directional derivative. If the function f is fixed, then the mapping x x 
f p display style x mapsto x f p is a linear functional on the tangent space. This linear functional is often denoted by df p and is called the differential of f at p d f p t p m r display style df p colon t underscore p m to math b f r topic partitions of unity one of the topological features of the sheaf of differentiable functions on a differentiable manifold is that it admits partitions of unity this distinguishes the differential structure on a manifold from stronger structures such as analytic and holomorphic structures that in general fail to have partitions of unity Suppose that M is a manifold of class CK, where 0 K infinity. Let U alpha be an open covering of M then a partition of unity subordinate to the cover U alpha is a collection of real-valued CK functions phi i on M satisfying the following conditions. The supports of the phi i are compact and locally finite. The support of phi i is completely contained in U alpha for some alpha the phi i sum to 1 at each point of m i phi i x equals 1 display style sum underscore i var phi underscore i x equals 1 note that this last condition is actually a finite sum at each point because of the local finiteness of the supports of the phi i Every open covering of a CK manifold M has a CK partition of unity. This allows for certain constructions from the topology of CK functions on Rn to be carried over to the category of differentiable manifolds. In particular, it is possible to discuss integration by choosing a partition of unity subordinate to a particular coordinate atlas, and carrying out the integration in each chart of Rn. Partitions of unity therefore allow for certain other kinds of function spaces to be considered, for instance LP spaces, Sobolev spaces, and other kinds of spaces that require integration. <laughs> <laughs> Differentiability of mappings between manifolds Suppose M and N are two differentiable manifolds with dimensions M and N, respectively, and F is a function from M to N. Since differentiable manifolds are topological spaces we know what it means for F to be continuous. But what does F is CK M, N mean for K1? We know what that means when f is a function between Euclidean spaces, so if we compose f with a chart of m and a chart of n such that we get a map that goes from Euclidean space to m to n to Euclidean space we know what it means for that map to be ck room, Rn. We define f is ck m, n to mean that all such compositions of f with charts are ck room, Rn. Once again, the chain rule guarantees that the idea of differentiability does not depend on which charts of the atlases on M and N are selected. However, defining the derivative itself is more subtle. If M or N is itself already a Euclidean space, then we don't need a chart to map it to 1. <laughs> Algebra of scalars For a CK manifold M, the set of real-valued CK functions on the manifold forms an algebra under pointwise addition and multiplication, called the algebra of scalar fields or simply the algebra of scalars. This algebra has the constant function 1 as the multiplicative identity, and is a differentiable analog of the ring of regular functions in algebraic geometry. It is possible to reconstruct a manifold from its algebra of scalars, first as a set, but also as a topological space. This is an application of the Banach Stone theorem, and is more formally known as the spectrum of AC algebra. 
First, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points of M and the algebra homomorphisms phi, C K M R. As such, a homomorphism phi corresponds to a codimension one ideal in C K M, namely the kernel of phi, which is necessarily a maximal ideal. On the converse, every maximal ideal in this algebra is an ideal of functions vanishing at a single point, which demonstrates that MSPEC the max spec of C K M recovers M as a point set, though in fact it recovers M as a topological space. One can define various geometric structures algebraically in terms of the algebra of scalars, and these definitions often generalize to algebraic geometry interpreting rings geometrically and operator theory interpreting Banach spaces geometrically. For example, the tangent bundle to M can be defined as the derivations of the algebra of smooth functions on M. This algebraization of a manifold replacing a geometric object with an algebra leads to the notion of a C asterisk algebra, a commutative C asterisk algebra being precisely the ring of scalars of a manifold, by Banach Stone, and allows one to consider noncommutative C asterisk algebras as noncommutative generalizations of manifolds. This is the basis of the field of noncommutative geometry. topic bundles topic tangent bundle the tangent space of a point consists of the possible directional derivatives at that point and has the same dimension n as does the manifold for a set of non-singular coordinates xk local to the point the coordinate derivatives K equals x k display style partial underscore k equals frac partial partial x underscore k define a holonomic basis of the tangent space. The collection of tangent spaces at all points can in turn be made into a manifold, the tangent bundle, whose dimension is 2n. The tangent bundle is where tangent vectors lie, and is itself a differentiable manifold. The Lagrangian is a function on the tangent bundle. One can also define the tangent bundle as the bundle of one jets from R the real line to M. One may construct an atlas for the tangent bundle consisting of charts based on U alpha times Rn, where U alpha denotes one of the charts in the atlas for M. Each of these new charts is the tangent bundle for the charts U alpha. The transition maps on this atlas are defined from the transition maps on the original manifold and retain the original differentiability class. Topic cotangent bundle The dual space of a vector space is the set of real valued linear functions on the vector space. The cotangent space at a point is the dual of the tangent space at that point and the cotangent bundle is the collection of all cotangent spaces. Like the tangent bundle, the cotangent bundle is again a differentiable manifold. The Hamiltonian is a scalar on the cotangent bundle. The total space of a cotangent bundle has the structure of a symplectic manifold. Cotangent vectors are sometimes called covectors. One can also define the cotangent bundle as the bundle of one jets of functions from M to R. Elements of the cotangent space can be thought of as infinitesimal displacements. If f is a differentiable function, we can define at each point p a cotangent vector dfp, which sends a tangent vector xp to the derivative of f associated with xp. However, not every covector field can be expressed this way. Those that can are referred to as exact differentials. For a given set of local coordinates xk, the differentials dxkp form a basis of the cotangent space at p. Tensor bundle The tensor bundle is the direct sum of all tensor products of the tangent bundle and the cotangent bundle. Each element of the bundle is a tensor field, which can act as a multilinear operator on vector fields, or on other tensor fields. 
The tensor bundle is not a differentiable manifold in the traditional sense, since it is infinite dimensional. It is however an algebra over the ring of scalar functions. Each tensor is characterized by its ranks, which indicate how many tangent and cotangent factors it has. Sometimes these ranks are referred to as covariant and contravariant ranks, signifying tangent and cotangent ranks, respectively. <laughs> Frame bundle A frame or, in more precise terms, a tangent frame, is an ordered basis of particular tangent space. Likewise, a tangent frame is a linear isomorphism of Rn to this tangent space. A moving tangent frame is an ordered list of vector fields that give a basis at every point of their domain. One may also regard a moving frame as a section of the frame bundle F M, A G L N, R principal bundle made up of the set of all frames over M. The frame bundle is useful because tensor fields on M can be regarded as equivariant vector valued functions on F M. <laughs> Jet bundles On a manifold that is sufficiently smooth, various kinds of jet bundles can also be considered. The first order tangent bundle of a manifold is the collection of curves in the manifold modulo the equivalence relation of first order contact. By analogy, the kth order tangent bundle is the collection of curves modulo the relation of kth order contact. Likewise, the cotangent bundle is the bundle of one jets of functions on the manifold, the k-jet bundle is the bundle of the k-jets. These and other examples of the general idea of jet bundles play a significant role in the study of differential operators on manifolds. The notion of a frame also generalizes to the case of higher order jets. Define a kth order frame to be the k-jet of a diffeomorphism from Rn to M. The collection of all kth order frames, Fk M, is a principal gk bundle over M, where gk is the group of k-jets, i.e., the group made up of k-jets of diffeomorphisms of Rn that fix the origin. Note that gl N, R is naturally isomorphic to g1, and a subgroup of every gk, k2. In particular, a section of F2 M gives the frame components of a connection on M thus, the quotient bundle F2 M per gigaliter N, R is the bundle of symmetric linear connections over M. <laughs> Calculus on manifolds Many of the techniques from multivariate calculus also apply, mutatis mutandis, to differentiable manifolds. One can define the directional derivative of a differentiable function along a tangent vector to the manifold, for instance, and this leads to a means of generalizing the total derivative of a function, the differential. From the perspective of calculus, the derivative of a function on a manifold behaves in much the same way as the ordinary derivative of a function defined on a Euclidean space, at least locally. For example, there are versions of the implicit and inverse function theorems for such functions. There are, however, important differences in the calculus of vector fields and tensor fields in general. In brief, the directional derivative of a vector field is not well defined, or at least not defined in a straightforward manner. Several generalizations of the derivative of a vector field or tensor field do exist, and capture certain formal features of differentiation in Euclidean spaces. The chief among these are the Lie derivative, which is uniquely defined by the differential structure, but fails to satisfy some of the usual features of directional differentiation. An affine connection, which is not uniquely defined, but generalizes in a more complete manner the features of ordinary directional differentiation. Because an affine connection is not unique, it is an additional piece of data that must be specified on the manifold. Ideas from integral calculus also carry over to differential manifolds. These are naturally expressed in the language of exterior calculus and differential forms. 
The fundamental theorems of integral calculus in several variables namely Green's theorem, the divergence theorem, and Stokes' theorem generalize to a theorem also called Stokes' theorem relating the exterior derivative and integration over submanifolds. Differential calculus of functions Differentiable functions between two manifolds are needed in order to formulate suitable notions of submanifolds, and other related concepts. If f, m n is a differentiable function from a differentiable manifold m of dimension m to another differentiable manifold n of dimension n, then the differential of f is a mapping df, trademark tn. It is also denoted by tf and called the tangent map. At each point of M, this is a linear transformation from one tangent space to another. D F P T P M T F P N Display style DFP colon T underscore PM to T underscore FPN the rank of f at p is the rank of this linear transformation. Usually the rank of a function is a pointwise property. However, if the function has maximal rank, then the rank will remain constant in a neighborhood of a point. A differentiable function, usually, has maximal rank, in a precise sense given by Sard's theorem. Functions of maximal rank at a point are called immersions and submersions. If m n and f m n has rank m at p element of m, then f is called an immersion at p. If f is an immersion at all points of m and is a homeomorphism onto its image, then f is an embedding. Embeddings formalize the notion of m being a submanifold of n. In general, an embedding is an immersion without self-intersections and other sorts of non-local topological irregularities. If m n, and f, m n has rank n at p element of m, then f is called a submersion at p. The implicit function theorem states that if f is a submersion at p, then m is locally a product of n and room minus n near p. In formal terms, there exist coordinates y1 un in a neighborhood of f p in n, and m minus n functions x1 X m minus n defined in a neighborhood of p in m such that y one f y n f x one x m minus n display style y underscore one circ f dot y underscore n circ f x underscore one dot x underscore m n is a system of local coordinates of m in a neighborhood of p submersions form the foundation of the theory of fibrations and fiber bundles topic lie derivative A Lie derivative, named after Sophus Lie, is a derivation on the algebra of tensor fields over a manifold M. The vector space of all Lie derivatives on M forms an infinite dimensional Lie algebra with respect to the Lie bracket defined by A B equals L A B equals minus L B a display style a b equals mathcal l underscore a b equals mathcal l underscore b a. The Lie derivatives are represented by vector fields as infinitesimal generators of flows, active diffeomorphisms on M. Looking at it the other way around, the group of diffeomorphisms of M has the associated Lie algebra structure of Lie derivatives in a way directly analogous to the Lie group theory. Topic: <laughs> Exterior calculus. The exterior calculus allows for a generalization of the gradient, divergence and curl operators. 
The bundle of differential forms, at each point, consists of all totally antisymmetric multilinear maps on the tangent space at that point. It is naturally divided into n forms for each n at most equal to the dimension of the manifold. An n form is an n variable form, also called a form of degree n. The one forms are the cotangent vectors, while the zero forms are just scalar functions. In general, an n form is a tensor with cotangent rank n and tangent rank 0. But not every such tensor is a form, as a form must be antisymmetric. Topic: Exterior derivative. There is a map from scalars to covectors called the exterior derivative. D C M T M F D F. Display style mathrm d colon mathcal c m two mathrm t caret asterisk m f mapsto mathrm d f such that d f t m c m v v f Display style mathrm d f colon mathrm t m to mathcal c m v mapsto v f. This map is the one that relates covectors to infinitesimal displacements mentioned above. Some covectors are the exterior derivatives of scalar functions. It can be generalized into a map from the n forms onto the n plus one forms. Applying this derivative twice will produce a zero form. Forms with zero derivative are called closed forms, while forms that are themselves exterior derivatives are known as exact forms. The space of differential forms at a point is the archetypal example of an exterior algebra, thus it possesses a wedge product, mapping a k-form and l-form to a k plus l form. The exterior derivative extends to this algebra, and satisfies a version of the product rule d Omega eta equals d omega eta plus minus one d e g omega omega d eta Display style mathrm d omega wedge eta equals mathrm d omega wedge eta plus minus one carrot room deg omega omega wedge mathrm d eta. From the differential forms and the exterior derivative, one can define the de Rham cohomology of the manifold. The rank n cohomology group is the quotient group of the closed forms by the exact forms. Topic: Topology of differentiable manifolds. Topic: Relationship with topological manifolds. Every topological manifold in dimension one, two, or three has a unique differential structure up to diffeomorphism. Thus, the concepts of topological and differentiable manifold are distinct only in higher dimensions. It is known that in each higher dimension, there are some topological manifolds with no smooth structure, and some with multiple non-diffeomorphic structures. The existence of non-smoothable manifolds was proven by Curvair 1960, see Curvair manifold, and later explained in the context of Donaldson's theorem. Compare Hilbert's fifth problem. A good example of a non-smoothable manifold is the E8 manifold. The classic example of manifolds with multiple incompatible structures are the exotic seven spheres of John Milner. Topic. Classification Every second countable one manifold without boundary is homeomorphic to a disjoint union of countably many copies of R the real line and S the circle. The only connected examples are R and S, and of these only S is compact. 
In higher dimensions, classification theory normally focuses only on compact connected manifolds. For a classification of two manifolds, C surface, in particular compact connected oriented two manifolds are classified by their genus, which is a non-negative integer. A classification of three manifolds follows in principle from the geometrization of three manifolds and various recognition results for geometrizable three manifolds, such as Mostow rigidity and Seller's algorithm for the isomorphism problem for hyperbolic groups. The classification of n manifolds for n greater than three is known to be impossible, even up to homotopy equivalence. Given any finitely presented group, one can construct a closed four manifold having that group as fundamental group. Since there is no algorithm to decide the isomorphism problem for finitely presented groups, there is no algorithm to decide whether two four manifolds have the same fundamental group. Since the previously described construction results in a class of four manifolds that are homeomorphic if and only if their groups are isomorphic, the homeomorphism problem for four manifolds is undecidable. In addition, since even recognizing the trivial group is undecidable, it is not even possible in general to decide whether a manifold has trivial fundamental group, i.e. is simply connected. Simply connected four manifolds have been classified up to homeomorphism by Friedman using the intersection form and Kirby Siebenman invariant. Smooth four manifold theory is known to be much more complicated, as the exotic smooth structures on R4 demonstrate. However, the situation becomes more tractable for simply connected smooth manifolds of dimension 5, where the h cobordism theorem can be used to reduce the classification to a classification up to homotopy equivalence, and surgery theory can be applied. This has been carried out to provide an explicit classification of simply connected 5 manifolds by Dennis Barden. Topic. Structures on manifolds Topic. Pseudo Riemannian manifolds A Riemannian manifold is a differentiable manifold on which the tangent spaces are equipped with inner products in a differentiable fashion. The inner product structure is given in the form of a symmetric two tensor called the Riemannian metric. This metric can be used to interconvert vectors and covectors, and to define a rank 4 Riemann curvature tensor. On a Riemannian manifold, one has notions of length, volume, and angle. Any differentiable manifold can be given a Riemannian structure. A pseudo-Riemannian manifold is a variant of Riemannian manifold where the metric tensor is allowed to have an indefinite signature as opposed to a positive definite one. Pseudo-Riemannian manifolds of signature 3, 1 are important in general relativity. Not every differentiable manifold can be given a strictly pseudo-Riemannian structure, there are topological restrictions on doing so. A Finsler manifold is a generalization of a Riemannian manifold, in which the inner product is replaced with a vector norm, this allows the definition of length, but not angle. <laughs> Symplectic manifolds A symplectic manifold is a manifold equipped with a closed, nondegenerate two-form. This condition forces symplectic manifolds to be even-dimensional. Cotangent bundles, which arise as phase spaces in Hamiltonian mechanics, are the motivating example, but many compact manifolds also have symplectic structure. All orientable surfaces embedded in Euclidean space have a symplectic structure, the signed area form on each tangent space induced by the ambient Euclidean inner product. Every Riemann surface is an example of such a surface, and hence a symplectic manifold, when considered as a real manifold. <laughs> Lie groups A Lie group is a C-infinity manifold that also carries a group structure whose product and inversion operations are smooth as maps of manifolds. 
These objects arise naturally in describing symmetries. Topic: <laughs> Generalizations. The category of smooth manifolds with smooth maps lacks certain desirable properties, and people have tried to generalize smooth manifolds in order to rectify this. Diffeological spaces use a different notion of chart known as a plot. Frolica spaces and orbifolds are other attempts. A rectifiable set generalizes the idea of a piecewise smooth or rectifiable curve to higher dimensions, however, rectifiable sets are not in general manifolds. Banach manifolds and Frechet manifolds, in particular, manifolds of mappings are infinite dimensional differentiable manifolds. See also equals equals notes <laughs>